Hello and welcome to another book review. This time about the definitive book on the development of the American contingency war plan for a war with Imperial Japan. Or more accurately, about the development of the strategic thinking and the reasons behind the strategic thinking of the United States on a war with Japan in the period before the Second World War. Because that plan was never really put into action or 100% put into action. But the strategic thinking and the ideas they developed still contributed a lot to how the war was fought. That book is War Plan Orange, US Strategy to Defeat Japan, 1897-1945 to by Edward S. Miller. Interestingly, he, the author, is not a historian, but he is a business exec executive who was interested in the topic and then went down to the Naval Historic Institute's archive to look at the documents that he could find on that topic. And then after working for 20 years or researching for 20 years, he published this book as a result of his hobby. So let's now have a closer look at what he produced over all those years. Now for the basic facts of the book. I already told you the name of the author and the title. The book I have is the first paperback edition from 2007. It was published by the Naval Institute Press in English. The book has got some 509 pages, of which some 369 are the actual content, and the rest, some 140 pages, are the appendices. The book is some 22 centimeters by 14 centimeters wide, or long and wide. It's quite big, so it's quite thick. And you can get it for some 30 euros in Germany or some 28 dollars in the United States, new. Or if you want to go for a used book, you can get it for some 15 euros or 15 dollars. Basically, the book is about everything there is to know about the history and development of War Plan Orange in great detail. So, how it was developed, what changes occurred, and why those changes occurred over time. The book is structured in 30 chapters, which lead us through that history in a broadly chronological order. So we can follow the events and we can follow how the pendulum kind of swings back and forth between the two important groups here or that argued and changed the plan all the time, the so-called thrusters, who wanted to advance rapidly after the war had broken out from the America to, uh, over to the Philippines, um, not taking a lot uh, of caution, and the cautionaries who wanted to or argued for a more gradual advance over this vast expanse of ocean. The book also deals with the changing organizations, planning personnel and institutions who did the planning in chapters called the American Way of Planning. The book is then rounded off by the last three chapters who deal with the actual influence that the pre-war War Plan Orange or the plans War Plan Orange had on the actual conduct of the war by the Americans, of the Second World War by the Americans. And then at the very end are the appendices who provide a list or which provide a list of planning personnel. Um, a lot of sources uh, and an index. If I have to think about negative things to say about this book, I could say that it's maybe too long. There's really a lot of information um, and a lot of detail. And at some points, it, uh, I had to, to, to get myself a bit to, to keep on reading, to keep on going through. If I have to think about positive aspects, the same thing that I just said is also a very positive aspect. Because if you want to know in depth about War Plan Orange, it's just perfect. You get a lot of information, a lot of background information. And so the book really is everything you can need there. That is very positive. 
the maps that are included, although maybe on a level of the 1990s and in a graphics design type of way, um, they help to understand the book and they really illustrate um, the changes over time. That's also a positive aspect. And I think another positive aspect that I also wanted to get out of this book uh, when I picked it up was that by looking at the American plans and the American perspective on fighting the Japanese and how they thought the Japanese would fight, you can also get a better understanding of Japanese um, strategy, where it existed and on why they developed some ships uh, they did and how they fought uh, the Second World War in a way that they did in the end. So you kind of get a mirror image of Japanese uh, strategic ideas uh, via this book and that's a very interesting aspect, I think. Final verdict. This is a very good and exhaustive study on the plan and the strategic thinking that in the end shaped how the United States fought World War II in the Pacific. If you really want to go into the deep background of the process that led to that um, point uh, where they were strategic-wise, strategic thinking-wise in 1941, and if you maybe even want to understand the Japanese strategy and the uh, Japanese mindset better, then this is the book for you. But if you're not this interested in or that interested in this topic, then this is not the right book for you because it's just too long and you should look for other ways to learn about it. Talking about other ways to know, uh, learn about this topic, while I researched this video, I came across a video by the YouTube channel Invicta, who do very good history content. And it's a very good video on the history of um, War Plan Orange. Um, I will link it down in the uh, description and maybe up here in the video. So if you're using, uh, looking for a shorter way of getting a lot of knowledge about War Plan Orange. If you're interested in the sort of information that War Plan Orange provides uh, for the Japanese side, not, not in total, but you know a bit, then uh, I can recommend to you the book Kaigun which details the history of the Imperial Japanese Navy and kind of in passing also uh, what they thought, how they would fight a war with the United States over time. So there's a bit of the same information for the Japanese in that book, Kaigun, that was here for the US in War Plan Orange. So now, thank you for watching, have fun reading and goodbye.